Look at this, right? This is a collectible. Check this out. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's McEwen from 2004. 2004, that's right. And that's the bloke who owns it. <laughs> and still rides it. He's offered 10 grand for it once at a charity auction suit. No. <laughs> Lots of sentimental value. Victor Popov, I was going that way. He was going this way. And I turned around and that's the start of the story of my ride. So I saw Victor Popov earlier and I thought that uh, I might have been able to explain why he was riding Robbie McEwen's bike and blah, blah, blah. But he was finishing his ride and I was just starting. So Victor's been around for oh, donkey's years, like a long time. And uh, this is his 18th tour down under, I think he told me yesterday. And he's uh, in the village with some uh, recovery station, a recovery station. So I'm gonna make a little video about what he's doing. There he is. Sweet relief. I've been pacing myself, but it's, it's go time. Do 90 seconds, yeah. 90 seconds yeah. which is now, yeah. and then I'm going to lazily get up and I'm going to do another session after. So, I was just saying to Victor that um, I can't feel it doesn't hurt here at all, but, but the extremities of my feet, they're just, uh, they're stinging on the ankle. I've got to stop talking about this, but I, I'm quite fascinated by the effect. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It was 34 degrees oh. on the bike, and it's okay. seven degrees in here. I'm not going to obsess about this, but I am going to just document the experience for me because I came in here stinging, like my ribs were really in a lot of pain. And then I just did a second session in the tub. And I put my toes out and or just on the base here, just there. And that helped enormously. And I did two minutes and I, I, I can say immediately, I feel like I put a band aid on the ache on the sting, on the, on the fractures, and it's, um, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm coming back every day, yeah, that's real, yeah, that actually, it's had an immediate impact, which is quite numb here, uh, everyone, I think most people have done ice bars, but let's, I, I like it, I think it's good, and uh, I'm glad that I can just do it when it's going to be bloody hot tomorrow too. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this whole recovery bar arrangement in an interview with Victor Popov. This is a, a nice bath, so I'm sticking my hand in. I'm about to jump in. It's uh, seven degrees. I'm going to go two minutes at least, and then I'm going to get out for two minutes, and I'm going to begin for two minutes. At least that's what I did yesterday afternoon after the second stage of the Tour Down Under for women. I'm getting used to it. I'm doing this because I've got fractures in my ribs. I'm doing this intro. Um, as I'm about to start my fourth dip in the ice bar. And then you'll see um, my first experience and I, I'm a little bit embarrassed to show you because I cringe a little bit and I sort of say, I want to get out, it's hurting. It's awesome for recovery, inflammation, suppression, both of which you need. But uh, I'm now used to it. I have fractures in my ribs, which are now two and a half weeks old. And they still give me grief. It's, I find it hard to sleep on the bike. Sometimes they come to, uh, to, to frustrate me or irritate me, but um, I'm moving, I'm getting exercise, and I feel like the exercise is serving me well. And I also feel like the recovery bar is 
really helping out. So that's the intro to this interview. Enjoy. I hope you learn a thing or two. It's seven degrees in here. I'm getting used to it. I've learned if I leave my toes out, I don't really suffer. For the first day, I put my toes in and my ankles really, really, really hurt. But um, I was concerned. Look at That's cold. Oh, Victor. Victor tells me you can keep arms out if I'm going to do that. That's right, I might All right. Anything less than 90 seconds apparently isn't worth it. So, uh, see how I go. I think most people watching this has probably tried an ice bath or two. Victor said just throw a few ice uh, bags in the, in the bath at home and, and do it that way just to get used to it. I tried doing that at home, but um, the water warmed up too quickly. But when I was in there, I was reluctant to keep going. So I was hurting on my legs. But now I feel all right. And my ribs, my, see the thing is, I don't feel the pain in my ribs through the day. It's when I go to bed. We'll have to get Phil to get in. He's cracked a few ribs as well. Victor knows a lot about the body. He's working with Plasmade, Life in Motion, and I'm just reading some logos around me. And I'm, I've referenced it before, and I will reference it again now. I fractured a few ribs on the eve of New Year's Eve, and I'm here to jump in the ice bath and, uh, and then report into Victor and tell him how much it, it served me well or not so well or whatever. So... There's uh, this is part of an ongoing narrative, but I'll get Victor to explain a little bit about Plasmade and the recovery booth that they've got going here at the Tour Down Under Village. And, uh, and then um, I'll, uh, I'll brave the cold water and hopefully that'll serve me well. So the concept of Plasmade is it helps performance and recovery. What we've set up here is a recovery bar. It's got the Normatec compression boots, the ice bath, the Hypervolt massage guns and the Plasmade product. So. The ice bath for you in your predicament, it helps your nervous system deal with stress, calms down that protective part of you, which is called your autonomic nervous system, your fight or flight responses. So pain is very much integrally related to that. So the ice bath for you was a way of helping calm down the autonomic nervous system, reduce pain, reduce inflammation, and often having an ice bath close to going to sleep, you sleep a lot better. The Plasmate product itself is, an, is about 20 times better than cucumin as an anti-inflammatory. So it's nature's most powerful anti-inflammatory. It also creates a nitric oxide response. So it increases blood flow. So it speeds up a whole lot of recovery and healing processes. So the recovery bar is about the different elements of recovery. But for you, we're chucking you in the high cool eight degree ice bath to help you sleep tonight. The whole premise of it is a little bit of blood health, let's say. Um, if we as cyclists or people who follow cycling know that blood has had a huge impact on health performance and not always in a good way in a good way well actually the, the key product to plasmate or the key ingredient to plasmate is a pine bark extract so it's a naturally occurring substance and it's what's called an adaptogen adaptogens are substances that you ingest that trigger your body to produce natural responses so the, the pine bark extract taken in through plasmate is absorbed and about 35 minutes later your body starts to produce nitrous nitric oxide which is a increaser in blood flow so it's a buzz like dilator so you get increased blood flow to your muscles to your organs to your brain i take it at three o'clock instead of a coffee i think zero for a, from an athlete's point of view 
35 minutes before you perform or train, it'll enhance the value of that training session and the outputs. But taken chronically, as in taken over a period of two to three weeks, it suppresses inflammation significantly as well. So I'll probably throw some at you for your ribs as well, because it does help reduce the inflammatory response in the body. Pine bark extract, is that right? Yes. Okay, so we've heard in the past beetroot juice is good, where there's uh, cranberry juice yes. and different antioxidants here yes. and there. How did you come to pine bark extract? It's a long story. Back when I was with the Brisbane Lions in 2000, there was a veterinary product that this was based on, okay. and it had that trigger. The, the, the base name was called Pycnogenol. There's a couple of different versions of it. Um, and that the science behind that I understood. The increase in nitric oxide production, I understood. And back in the days of working with Heiko with the Russians, um, science and sports, Tim Lawson was producing nitrate gels for us. That was the year that everyone peed red at the Tour de France for the, the urine tests because beetroot juice was the thing. But that's an external introduction of nitrates and your body can only use that to a certain point. What this does that's different is it triggers your body's natural production of nitric oxide. So it's not taking an exogenous substance, it's triggering an endogenous response. Hence, it's got more power and it's more natural, for want of a better term. Uh, you and I have been involved with cycling during the really dark days yes. where we learned a lot about blood and the impact of red cells yes. and so on and yes. so forth because of... Uh, EPO. Because of EPO. Yep. And because of... Uh, and microdosing, and then yep. there were all sorts, all sorts of, of different, different things. things. Yeah. Is there any threat of this being a, uh, a, a under the Asada radar? No, and, and it's very much overtly, it has both what's called first flag X and informed sport batch testing. So as you see on the, the packets, there's first flag X and informed sport. Now they're the two organizations in the world that what are approved to test substances. First Flag X is quite a unique uh, testing protocol that picks up unknown substances versus informed sport, which picks up the water list of known substances. Professor Alison Heather, who um, runs First Flag X or developed the testing protocols, it was her testing protocol that pinged Marion Jones in Sydney. So First Flag X is the commercialized version of testing Alison developed back in 2000 that was actually the testing protocol that got those guys that were using clear. So, Plasmate has been thoroughly developed over 10 years by Steve Len, and integral to that has been the validity of the testing. So it is definitely both water approved or through those mechanisms of informed sport and first flag X, safe for anyone to use it's in sport. All right, I'm here to jump in the tub. Here we go. Super duper. All right, I'm about to get really cold. Let's go. Uh, ice bath behind me. For decency's sake, I'm going to keep the shorts on. And you can come in and do it with your nicks. That's going to be pretty obvious. I had a swim at the hotel pool after my ride this morning. That was already bloody beautiful, but it's hot in Adelaide. The water was warm. This is eight degrees now, and I've got my hand in it, and it's, uh, yeah, that's pretty chilly, but I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I just hope I don't have a cardiac incident, but we'll see how we go. Legs first, and go in, breathe. Pull through your nose out to your mouth. You've got to get down to where you're with the Breathe in, out, uh, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Press your head back on the edge. That's it. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Take yourself anywhere back here. There's still that head space, right? It's not about things you can tolerate. It's about getting the psychology of coping and stress and control. If you're struggling a bit, just take your hands out and put them up the edge. It's starting to hurt now. It's okay. So, so this is 90 second barrier. We can take a break there. It's only been on there. Yep. Oh, it's starting to hurt. It's okay. It's going to hurt. It's going to keep the breathing up. Take yourself off. Take yourself off. 30 seconds. That's 30 seconds now. You'll get there. It's, it's, it's learning, teaching your body to not be responsive in a negative way to the stress. 45 seconds. We're at one minute. We'll go to nine. Take a break. 
Or do you feel like punching over the fingers? That's good. I'm going to get to know it. Does, it hurts more in my legs yeah. than in. And, and if you want to take your feet out, take your toes out. We're 130 now. Can we stay in the foot? No, no. You get much better paper. Just step out, right off, and then go back. You find the second second move is the most right. Oh. Oh. Well, I have to say that was that was quite rough. I, I expected it to in, impact me more on the chest, but it really hurt my legs. My my my. I wanted to get out because my feet were hurting. I feel quite comfortable actually. Now I'm really warming up. That was ninety seconds. And what what are we doing now? Jumping in again. Time to go back in. Well, it's pleasant in a funny way. Oh, leave your hands out. And the whole idea is, oh, that hurts. I feel quite uncomfortable. Just a little bit so your neck's out. It's just right in the body, it's a real head. That's better. Now it's really uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. Wait six seconds. Breathe in. Breathe in. Out, take yourself off the whole man. This is a mental exercise, not a physical exercise. Your body physically can tolerate this no problem. It's the psychology of stress. But there's physical upside. So it's 45 seconds to it. Well, the second time is going quicker. Absolutely. And if you can hang in there, you will But when I'm lifting my feet, like uh, flexing my toes, and it, I can, it really hurts my legs. Yeah. You're in a minute now. Yeah. Like you're there. So at this point in the first episode, you were very uncomfortable. At 109. I'll be keen to get out. I know that much. Get to 130. Oh, that's hurting. Yeah, breathe it in, breathe it out. Get one third in there. Top out. Yeah, get oh. Thank you. Oh. I think to say we're going to do this every day, and I'll be doing 10 minutes by the end of the week. But my toes are numb, and my, um, but my, uh, I feel great. It's like if you have a cold swim. You jump in, you think, what am I doing? And then you, you then you feel refreshed and invigorated and happy and better. So hopefully that'll be the case now. Oh. Oh.